Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at the Gel Nimbus 25 versus the Nike Infinity Run 3. Just pretend that they're there. So let's start off with the Gel Nimbus as it's in my hand. So a uh, bit of a different one from ASICS this year. Usually they have the gel bit exposed, but it's all inside. And I believe it's only in the heel this year as well. Whereas previously it's been throughout. This is my first pair of ASICS shoes ever. My first ever running shoes with ASICS. So it's been a, it's been a good first experience to be honest. Uh, I've got fairly wide feet, slightly wider than average. I found these to be slightly on the narrow side for myself. Um, not really on the width here necessarily, but my toes sort of curl up a little bit on the length here. It seems to just cut across my toes. That's my only gripe really with these shoes. Otherwise, they've been fantastic. So let's have a look at the features then. Uh, you've got a lot of foam here, uh, sort of that marshmallow squish. Not quite as much as the Nikes, um, but definitely enough. And then a fair bit on the forefoot there. In terms of wear, um, 100 miles in, I've seen more wear than the Nikes, but really nothing at all. Um, not much creasing of the foam, barely any wear on the forefoot uh, or on the heel really, just a little bit. You've got a really big covering of that outsole there. So I'd say straight off the bat, if you're looking for a more traditional trainer, then this is your best bet. The, uh, it has a nice rock to it, so as you can see, you've got that taper bit there, and it does want to propel you forwards. It definitely feels like a more traditional trainer in comparison to the Nikes. So the upper is fantastic on the A6, much better than the Nikes. Uh, the tongue is actually connected to the, uh, to the rest of the upper, and it's really super soft. You probably get away with running without socks in these, to be honest. Um, you've got a nice, uh, pull tab, not that you really need it on these shoes, they're quite loose fitting. You've got loads of padding in the heel cup there. Um, like I say, if they just made that toe box a bit bigger for me, it would be uh, an ideal shoe. So my longest run so far in these guys is just under 13 miles, which for me is, is a fairly long run at this stage of my training. And they were fantastic. Um, you really start to get into the flow after about 10k or so, and they start to just sort of push you forwards. Uh, next day, in terms of recovery, I felt really good. Um, I'm gonna put that down to the nice squashy foam. Not as squashy as the Nikes, uh, Zumex foam, but squashy enough, a little bit firmer ride. Uh, if it was as squashy as the Nikes, then it will have the disadvantage that I'm gonna get onto in a second that the Nikes do. So yeah, uh, really good rating for the A6. To be honest, it's my ideal long run shoe except from that toe box. If that toe box was fixed, or if you have slightly narrower or slightly more sort of curved toes, my curves, my toes are fairly sort of flat. They don't drop off much. So if you've got more droppy off toes, then this would be perfect for you. Another thing to mention is a six 90 day use and return policy in comparison to Nike's 30 days. Um, so yeah, you can test these bad boys out uh, without any worry that if they don't work for you, you, you can't return them. So finally, let's have a look at the price, £175 retail, so it's a pricey shoe. It's a really pricey shoe, to be honest, um, for what it is. It's a nice shoe, but it's not worth that much, in my opinion, especially when you consider shoes are lasting 400, 500 miles. You probably get a bit more out of it, but the cushioning's probably going to go a little bit. So yeah, price-wise, these are more expensive than the Nikes. And it's not justified in my opinion. I would say the finish and the fit and everything does feel and look slightly better than the Nikes, especially like here. Sometimes you get a bit of a gap on the Nikes or something like that. Um, but there's nothing like that on the A6. But really, I mean, the Nike and the A6 don't get them at full price. Wait for a sale or try and get a discount because it's it's just not worth it. But overall, super impressed. Just that toe box issue for me. So the uh, Nike. Invincible Run 3, newest iteration of the Invincible Run from Nike. I did not get along with the uh, version 1 or version 2, especially the version 2. I, I hated the upper on that. It didn't really lock down my foot at all, although the, uh, the uh, toe box was nice and roomy. The heel was all loose. Um, I have had to tie a runner's knot in my Nike Invincible Run 3. Um, otherwise, again, the heel cup is, is quite loose. I would say... It would be really good as like a casual walking around trainer, 
Uh, but of course we're here for the running aspect. Uh, in terms of running, it's, uh, it's a very different shoe to what I'm used to. It's insanely stable with that humongous plate uh, at the bottom there. Uh, it's so big in fact, I've got quite a narrow gait when I run and I've caught it on my leg quite a few times on my ankle and it sort of slices it and it's uh, it's not very nice if you're not wearing high socks. It's, so it's very, very wide on the forefoot there and that is because of that Zoom X foam. So you've got 40 millimeters, same as the ASICs in the heel uh, and that's it's a lot of foam. Uh, and like I was saying, the ASICs uh, is a little bit more rigid so they can get away with that more traditional trainer design whereas the Nike isn't, it's very, very, very squidgy. So to get around that squidginess and that stability issue that you would have with the Nikes, they've had to encase it and put that really wide plate on the bottom of the Nikes, and that's basically meant that it's uh, very, very stable, sometimes overly stable. You would not want to go off-road in them. It's gonna cause you all sorts of ankle problems. Um, and even sort of round here country lanes when the road sort of slanted, it forces your foot to land at that angle, whereas the ASICs can sort of mould a bit more. So yeah, if you had the uh, feel of the ASICs with the Zoomex foam, that would be my ideal shoe, but you can't have that unfortunately due to the properties of the foam. The Nikes are a lot flatter on the foot, uh, so they're not quite as rockery as the ASICs are. It's a much more flat-footed landing, um, you still get that nice zoom X propulsion forwards, so that sort of makes up for it. The Nikes also had a pull tab, which I actually used quite a lot because I tied that runner's knot. It was quite tight to get my foot in there, so I actually found that to be useful. So the Nike upper, um, although I prefer the ASICs upper, the Nike had a lot more width, in my opinion, and a lot more room in the toe box. I didn't have any toe squidging issues like I do on the ASICs. So in terms of fit, the Nike was actually better. In terms of actual feel, I would say the A6 is better. So yeah, the A6 definitely wins on that upper comfort. It's uh, it's much softer and a lot more hugging of your foot than the Nike is. But I suppose you can't have it both ways. The A6 is a bit tighter and you feel a bit more locked down, which is nicer, but then it's a bit too tight on the toes for me, whereas the Nike is a lot more roomy, but then it's a bit more floppy on your foot. So which one have I chosen? Well, the clue is that I have the A6 here and I no longer have the Nikes. So although I do have that toe room issue with the ASICs. I can sort of deal with that. It's not too bad, um, but I much prefer the feel of the ASICs. It just feels like a, a normal trainer. Um, I can't really agree with the Nike just because it's so wide, because it has to be because of that Zoom X. So I probably give the ASICs about an eight and a half out of 10 for me, and then I'll give the uh, Nikes a eight out of 10. So it's very, very close behind. It, it gets that score because it's about 10 pounds cheaper. The Zoom X foam feels so much nicer. It's a lot more cushions than the A6. I really like that. However, the really big letdown is that heel lock is not very good. So you have to cinch the laces up quite tight. And it's also way too wide uh, for the running around here. If you're running on track or if you're running on nice smooth roads, like if you're in the States or something like that, then the Nike's probably gonna be better uh, than they are in the UK here for me. Or if you've got a different foot shape, then the Nikes might be a bit more interesting if you've got wider heels or something like that. Ah, one last thing that I haven't mentioned yet is the grip. The grip is much better on the A6 in my opinion. Uh, they've worn quicker. The Nikes showed almost nowhere after 100 miles, but that's because that rubber is really hard on the bottom. Um, so nowhere, but higher rubber, whereas the ASICs have worn a bit more. They've got a slightly softer rubber. Uh, in the wet, the Nikes didn't really have any grip at all, um, or it was very limited. I, I didn't feel much confidence in the shoe. So I would say if you're looking for that absolute max cushion, go for the Nike. That Zoom X foam is a lot softer than the ASICs, in my opinion. If you're looking for a more traditional shoe, more traditional feel, the ASICs is going to be your best option. Like I said before though, do not buy either at full price unless you've got lots of money because they are an insanely expensive shoes, both of them 165, 175 pounds. It's a lot of money for those daily trainers. They're gonna last you a long time. They're gonna save your joints. So it is gonna be worth a decent amount of money, but not that full retail price in my opinion. If you have enjoyed this video, then press that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this one. And if you have any questions about either of these shoes, then let me know in the comments down below.